going on guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to be stepping away from the exhaust work which i have not finished um i still need to get some shielding gas i'm going to finish it out with some trimix since i did argon in the last video and as you can see if you go back to that video the weld got super tall and ropey it penetrated all right but it was not the best weld so i'm going to try to get a bottle of trimix uh swap out my 20 pound bottle of argon for a 20 pound bottle of trimix and finish it out that way. I can also show you guys um, how different the welding can be just based on the gas. Uh, not changing anything else, this will be stainless steel wire. Um, but today I'm gonna be concentrating more on the interior of the car. Um, as you can see, I've got some goodies from a few different companies. Um, Energy, I uh, got the seats from, got some race quip uh, five point harnesses, which these seats are actually or five point mount down in the bottom there. Um, so that'll go right in the pad and the bottom of the seat, as well as a Cypher Auto harness bar. Now I know a roll bar is much more preferable for using um, in a street car. Uh, this is just for this season. Uh, I do actually have uh, some bent up tubing behind the car that's for a roll cage. So that will be coming later also. Just whenever, I just wanted to get the car running um, and driving and get everything squared away before I send it off to get the cage put in. So, um, also I've got some door panels from, it's Maka or MKAH. I'm not sure how to actually pronounce it. I tried to get clarification on that, but if I murder it or it's not even close, uh, let me know in the comments how it's pronounced. Uh, but those door panels, uh, I actually did fit them up to the car and apparently so on the website for the door panels it says that the door panels will work for a uh everything except for 1992 well this car being a january of 93 i uh, did a little research afterwards which kind of sucked because i heard about the door panels i'm still gonna try to make them work but the window motor from the 92 is the same one that they use all the way up until 9 of 93 so this car does have the old style uh, door panels on it. Unfortunately, like I said, I'm still gonna try to make these work. The only thing that doesn't really line up is because the window motor is thicker, it pushes it out away from the door. So the door handle is actually kind of recessed into the door. I did slip it on there, it slips into the groove for the factory panels and close the door and everything. It doesn't look terrible from the outside, but if you're really looking at it, you're gonna notice it. Um, so like I said, I'm still going to try to make those work. So I'm going to spend this video installing most of this stuff. I may not get to the door panels today because I think I'm going to try to create some stuff uh, for this. So it's not bowing to the sides. I may create some standoffs for the upper part of the door panel since it is kind of going to, uh, it's going to fit in that channel up top and then it's going to roll around that window motor. So I may have to create some spacers or something like that that I can drill into and then it'll create a small standoff so it still fits. Um, so I'm gonna be installing the seats, harness, and the harness bar today. So we will get to work on that. And I've already taken the liberty of cleaning the interior, which I am absolutely amazed at the interior of this car, how clean it came. This car has 238,000 miles on it and I'm sure it was not driven lightly. Uh, I know it was autocross for a while, but also being that it's a 93, it's probably had some gross feet and stuff like that in it before, mud and dirt and all that stuff. So we'll get to that. I'll show you this interior real quick. All right, so got the Sparco wheels installed. Also, I did install these off camera. Uh, they're not really installed installed yet. They still have to wire, be wired, which I've got the bottom part of the dash. Also, if somebody could tell me what this thing is, there was a switch. It was on the bottom of the column here. I'm not sure what that does. I'm assuming it's some kind of disarming device or anti-theft because there's also this little red light here. It's never blinked as, far, as long as I've owned it, so I'm not sure what it actually does. So, but you can see the wiring for the gauges is right here. I've got it ran up into the center console, so it's apart right now. But I'll do this later. But just look at this carpet here i mean this thing was disgusting i'll post a picture somewhere in here i'm not sure but i'll put a picture in here so you can actually see how bad it was but 
both sides came super clean. Oh, that just switched to night mode or something, but yeah, these okay, you can switch anytime now. But yeah, they came super clean, so it's perfect for putting the seats in there. I'm not sure what it's doing, anyways. So I will start installing the harness bar, which has to go in first for me to put the uh, seat belts and everything in. So the harness bar will go in and then I'll put the seats in and start putting the harnesses in. All right, there's the sad bike that I haven't touched in a while. That'll be another project still. So when you open the box, this is, like I said, from Cypher. I'll post it down in the description. It comes with the, these are actually like struts that run from the harness bar to the floor. Uh, they will have your adjustment and everything. Um, this box here has all of your heim joints and everything uh, to make that adjustment. Also, your mounting points, um, all your hardware. It's all black anodized for black oxide. Your heim joints, all your little brackets and everything for mounting it up. And then the bar itself, which I believe just comes in a couple different colors. I just got the black. So I really like the black with the stainless uh, logo here, which I realize I have to flip because, well, yeah, I really, I'll have to flip because it'll be upside down. You'll only be able to see it from the back of the car, which is kind of weird, but I'll have to flip this over because these are actually the top of the bar. So I'll get to installing that. All right, so something I did want to mention, actually real quick, the harness bar is still technically a universal kit, so it does come with a lot of different hardware and stuff. There'll be some of the stuff that I don't end up using. There's, so there's a bunch of nuts and bolts and stuff like that. I won't end up using a few of these. A couple of these will install into here because there is a welded or a weld nut there. And also on these uh, little clevis joints uh, with the mounting brackets in them, we'll also use um, these Allen head screws that came with it. So uh, once, you start putting all this stuff together make sure you don't tighten any of it until everything is installed in the car so there'll be a couple places that it'll mount which will be right here uh, where your little sleep, uh, seat belt slider thing is where it loops on and then also up here uh, the uh, seat belt mounting point so i can actually take the seat belt completely out of there um, what i've seen a lot of people do is either just unbolt it from here take it off of there and then just drop it down in inside the panel because uh, there's a little void uh, behind this panel. So I may do that just so there are seat belts in here and I don't lose them. Uh, you really won't see them at all because they'll be down in there. But the uh, in case I go to install uh, seats with seat belts later, I can always do that again. So I may leave them in there. But same thing on the other side. Right there on the, if it'll focus, it's focus on my finger. Right here, and then also down there again. So, all right, so I've got this most of the way installed. Uh, something I did want to note, uh, these heim joints, there's only a certain length here. You definitely don't want to thread them out to the end. You only have about an inch of, of a total adjustment here. So, the general rule of thumb uh, for pretty much any bolt for thread engagement is at least one times the the diameter of the bolt so whatever the diameter of the bolt is that's how many threads you want in there but this being a safety item you want to give probably a couple extra ones so i'm going to end up marking the uh bolt here so about right here is probably about uh one width worth of engagement i'm probably going to go down probably about halfway so i'm going to put a line halfway up this um, threaded piece and that is the most adjustment I want to get out of it um, now once that's where I'm going to start with so that will give me a little bit of room not a whole lot to adjust it because once everything is in here this bar you want to typically have at or above your shoulders so that way when you get in an accident or you hit something or any reason where you're going to be going forward rapidly the uh, seat belts don't actually compress your spine so you want to have those above because if you have them below uh, when you go forward it's going to want to tend to pull down on your shoulders which is really bad 
So once I have the seats in, the harnesses in and everything, I will do my final adjustments on these bolts right here. So like I said, at least one diameter's worth of thread engagement in the end of this. Um, also, I use the factory spacer here with the factory bolt. It comes with some other bolts and those spacers, but I didn't like the way it was angling this. I mean, this isn't a whole lot bigger, but it is a lot better than that because that's only probably, you know, not even a half inch. And this uh, piece here is like a full inch. And then you also get, like I said, one diameter's worth of engagement minimum using that. If you want to shave it down a little more, you can. Uh, I decided that it was probably okay, so I left it. So I'm going to shave those down later, but for now, I'm going to leave it. Like I said, there's at least one diameter's width of engagement. So for the time being, that's going to stay. And now I'm going to start installing well finish installing this and then installing the seats so so the seats that i'm going to be using like i said are going to be energy um these are like a good i mean they sell a, a wide range of different ones they sell anywhere from like these are kind of like a cheaper set but they're non-reclinable uh, they do have some cheaper reclinable ones as far as i know but these ones are the fixed back uh, they also have the high uh side bolster here um, for this version it, i'll post those also in the description below i think there were something 311 was the actual part number for those but so it's got the side mounts um, i've already got them adjusted to where i kind of want them as far as in the car this is the passenger side so i've also got sliders here and then the actual brackets that i went with were the planted seat brackets so you can see the the tag there um, these are actually really good brackets they're super thick as you can see steel uh, they're all tig welded the welds are all uh, pretty good you can kind of see one there on the actual mount um but something weird i found about this one you can see there's a seat belt mount here for the uh, five point harness here for some reason there is not one over here so i think i'm just gonna mount it down to this point here which shouldn't be a problem so the other bracket i have if i can find it i don't remember where i set it Oh, it's over here by the other seat. So I still have to install this seat on this bracket. But you can see there's two mounting points on this one. So if anybody knows why that's like that, or if the other one over there is just not made right, um, let me know. Because like I said, there's two mounting points for this one. Uh, there's also not a spot for the um, submarine belt. Uh, so I will have to mount that too later. Uh, for the time being, the four point will be fine. Um, I will install that before I start driving it, though, just to let you know. I'm not going to just use it as it's not intended. But I still have to mount this to the sliders that I've already installed on this one as well. So we'll do that, and I'll see you in just a second. All right, so I've got everything installed here. Uh, I'll flip you around in just a second so I can show you everything that's going on here. Um, not completely finished. I do have to get some bolts for the harnesses because I wasn't sure what size they are so I'll have to grab some uh, tomorrow or whenever uh, and put, install those to finish off the harnesses then I can finally adjust the actual belts themselves but let me turn you around real quick and uh, I will show you how I installed everything and I'll show you that all right so everything's installed I've got both seats in here on the sliders everything uh, this is what I was talking about though the bolts for down here to go to those tabs for the harnesses aren't done also the uh, in the harness bar how you properly install these these actually came with the these tabs right here uh, in case you bolt them in if i'm not bolting them in i'm using a harness bar they actually wrap around this bar so you will this part right here just undoes it or you undo it you take off that bolt in part you feed it up around the top of the bar through the bottom of that through the top of it back around and then back through the top of it there um, i will still have to uh, zip tie those up so they look a little neater uh, you might have seen other people do it that way i'm going to do it the same way because it does make it a, little, a lot cleaner and then also when you have the windows down they're not flapping around behind you so you see I got zip ties in here so um the other thing like I said I'll still have to install a submarine mount 
Uh, I'll either tie that into the bracket right here um, in the front on the planted bracket, or I may have to drill a hole through the floor and actually put a uh, clevis there so that I can attach it. But um, like I said before, the belts are race equipped, so they do have an SFI rating. So unfortunately, the cheapest thing here is the seats and the harness bar. The harness bar not ne isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the fear is when you have a car like this, uh, these seats are going to hold you upright with a harness. And in case of a rollover, you're not going to be able to duck out of the way. Um, at least that's what people say. I tend to believe them, but um, this is the cheaper alternative to do it this way. So everything has been tightened. I've tightened the jam nuts that are up here, down here. Um, so that is the set length. Like I was saying, if you... I mean, you can kind of see it. The car's kind of tilted like this right now. So but if I tilt it so that the window is level, you can see the belts are actually kind of low. But when you pull on them, uh, the acceptable range for the angle is anywhere between 5 degrees down and roughly 30 degrees up. It'll, it'll tell you in the race quip instructions how to install those and what the acceptable range is. Being at the angle that they're at right there, um, and then also when I'm sitting in here, my shoulders are below uh, those holes anyways also. Um, they should be all right, so it shouldn't be a huge issue. You can kind of see the reason for the door panels, they just kind of fall apart. You can kind of see the map pocket down here. If you know E36s, you'll know that they usually delaminate here. And then also in these pockets, you can kind of see in the corners that they delaminate. So that's why I got those. So. But that will be another video. I uh, just wanted to get these installed today. Next, I'm going to be working on... I actually did get a glove box delete from the same company I got the door panels from. That if, Also, if you know E36s, you know these glove boxes like to destroy themselves. And so I'm going to get rid of that altogether. Uh, these seats actually have pockets in the front of them, so you can put all your insurance paperwork and stuff down there or anything you possibly want. So... So that's going to be it for today. Uh, for the time being, I mean, it's about 1030 at night and I've got work tomorrow still. So um, next time I'll probably be installing the door panels and the glove box delete along with some wiring for these gauges. I've got a, uh, the gauges I showed you earlier, one is a Innovate boost gauge and the other one is actually a boost controller slash boost, ga boost gauge slash wideband, all that stuff. So it's the SCG1. And then the, um, I forget what the, the boost gauge is right now, but it's the same, same brand. So we'll get those wired in next time. I'll be able to read AFR, stuff like that. Like I said, also the shielding gas for the welder, I will be getting in the meantime also I'm trying to finish up the exhaust on this. Um, so that I can actually get it driving because there's not a whole lot left besides a little bit of wiring. I'm going to wire in the fan, those gauges, and finish up the exhaust. And the car should be mobile at that point. There's still some bodywork stuff to hammer out, like the uh, turbo cutout in the hood. I'm going to end up putting like a teardrop uh, shaped scoop over top of that and probably painting it the same color as the body or black, whichever. I'm going to check out probably both colors, but... That and the bumper and the wing, and then that's pretty much all that's left with the car. So hopefully I'll have it out this season, but if not, it's probably because I'm going to get super anal about something. So, But anyways, I'll have all those videos coming up soon, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll finish this thing up. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.